Hello everyone, I am Lokesh, working as an assistant professor in Department of Physics at Maharaja Institute of Technology, Mysore. Today, in this video session, I am going to discuss about the basics of forced oscillation, the expression for the amplitude and phase of the forced oscillation and the cases relating to the forced oscillation. Now, let us see what are what is mean by forced oscillations. Now, if you consider any oscillations or in the case of harmonic oscillations, the frequency of the oscillation goes on decreases exponentially with the time. Now, this is because of the presence of the damping factor, which is because of the medium. For example, the frictional forces which are acting on the oscillations like air and other forces which are acting on the oscillating body because of these other forces the oscillation of the body goes on decreases exponentially. Now, if you want the oscillating body to continuously oscillate, what we have to do is, we have to give an external force to the oscillating body with the energy such that the amplitude of the oscillating body does not decrease uh, exponentially with the time. So, such kind of oscillations wherein we give an external force so that the amplitude of the oscillation does not decrease exponentially with the time are called forced oscillations. The oscillations in which an external force is applied on an oscillating body. In order to make it oscillate continuously are called forced oscillations. Now, in the case of forced oscillations, uh, what we do is we give an external force of the same frequency and same amplitude which we have applied earlier to an oscillating body. We apply the force again so that the oscillating body does not stop exponentially with the time. So, that kind of oscillations we call as a forced oscillation. Now, some examples for forced oscillations are. Oscillations of swing, then oscillations in tuning fork. Now, based on this uh, forced oscillation definition, next what we are going to do is, we are going to derive an expression for the amplitude as well as the phase of the forced oscillations. or let us consider a, a simple pendulum. Now, in the case of simple pendulum, what we will do? So, let us consider a simple pendulum. Let it be at the equilibrium position. Okay. Now, our work is done in order to bring the simple pendulum to the extreme position. So, that it starts oscillating. So, as soon as we give the force to the simple pendulum, the simple pendulum starts oscillating. Now, what we have to do is, we have to make this simple pendulum oscillate continuously so that it does not stop. So, that is the basics of what is meant by forced oscillation. So, there are three forces acting on the oscillating body for the forced oscillation. One is
the restoring force acting in the opposite direction of applied force is given by is minus k into y we call this as equation 1 the frictional or damping forces acting in opposite direction to the velocity of oscillating body is given by minus r into dy by dt this is the second force the first one is the the force the restoring force acting in the opposite direction to the applied force is given by its uh, minus k into y minus sign indicates that the force is acting in the opposite direction again the frictional forces are the damping forces acting in the opposite direction to the velocity of the oscillating body it is given by minus r into dy by dt now we have the third force which is making the body to oscillate continuously without decreasing the amplitude of the oscillating body the external force applied on the oscillating body given by f sin pt we'll call this as the total forces acting on the <coughs> oscillating body is given by so we'll set equal to now we have the first force that is it's minus k into y the second force we have the second force that is minus r into dy by dt now the third force is uh, the f sin pt where f is the amplitude of the applied force and p is the angular frequency of the applied force okay because of that we have to add this term f sin pt to the equation so we'll call this as equation the force applied is equal to its mass times acceleration due to gravity so what we have to do is we have to convert this expression in the differential form so we know that the force applied can be written as mass times if the acceleration can be written in the differential form as d square y by dt square so we'll call this as f1 and call this as f2 so we'll call this as so comparing equation 4 and equation 5 m into d square y by dt square is equal to minus k into y minus r into dy by dt plus f sin equation 6 now again this has to be arranged 
in order to get the differential form of this equation. So basically, uh, this equation will become a second order differential equation. So we have to keep the equation or rearrange the equation in the second order differential equation form. So we'll divide equation 6 by m, then we'll get its d square y by dt square is equal to minus k by m into y minus r by m times dy by dt plus f by m times sin dt. We have to bring this to a second order differential equation form, so we will just rearrange it. So this equation becomes d square y by dt square plus r by m into dy by dt plus k by m into y is equal to f by m sin dt. We'll call it such. Select the solution for the equation 7 is given by y is equal to a sin pt minus theta, we will call this as equation 8. Now since we have assumed the equation uh, or the solution for the equation as y is equal to a sin pt minus theta, so what we have to do is we have to find out the amplitude as well as the phase difference for this differential equation. So in order to find out the amplitude as well as the phase difference for this uh, differential equation of forced oscillation, so we have to go on differentiating the equation 8 so that I can substitute those values here in this differential equation of the forced oscillation and later we can we will be able to find out the solution. So we will differentiate. equation 8 with respect to t. So it is dy by dt is equal to, we have to differentiate the equation 8 in order to obtain the amplitude as well as the phase of the forced oscillation. So if we differentiate the equation 8, so we get dy by dt is ap cos pt minus theta and if we differentiate further, so it is minus AP square sine PT minus theta, we will call this as 9, we will call this as 7. So we have equation 7 as d square y by dt square plus r by m into dy by dt plus k by m into y is equal to f by m sin. Now in order to simplify this differential equation further, what we will do is we will substitute r by m is equal to 2b k by m as omega square and f by m as capital F. So this differential equation becomes d square y by dt square plus 2b into dy by dt plus omega square y is equal to capital F sin so this to this differential equation we will substitute the values of 8, 9 and 10. So the differential equation becomes, so this is minus AP square sin PT minus theta plus 
टू बी इंटू ए पी कॉस पी टी माइनस थीटा प्लस ओमेगा स्क्वेर ए साइन पी टी माइनस थीटा इज इक्वल टू एफ साइन पी टी विल कॉल दिस एज इक्वेशन ए साइन पी टी माइनस थीटा सो वी आर लेफ विद ओमेगा स्क्वेर वन एंड इट्स माइनस पी स्क्वेर प्लस टू बी ए पी कॉस पी टी माइनस थीटा इज इक्वल टू F sin t. We call this as equation 12. We have to substitute certain terms to the equation 12 in order to simplify this equation further. We have to substitute the values in such a way that the value or the value of this whole equation does not change. So that we'll be able to find out the amplitude as well as the phase difference for the forced oscillation. So we can write. this as f sin pt minus theta then plus theta okay so as you can see i have added theta and subtracted theta so that the equation does not get changed So we'll just write this: a sine p t minus theta omega square minus p square plus two b a p cos p t minus theta, and then we added and subtracted theta to the right hand side of the equation. So we'll call this as equation thirty. Now, using equation thirteen, what we have to do is we have to simplify the equation thirteen further, so that we'll be able to get the amplitude as well as the phase of the forced oscillation. I'm going to write as this is F sine p t minus theta plus theta. Now, as if you see this, this is in the form of sine of a plus b, so we can expand. In the form of, I will just write the whole equation. A sine p t minus theta into omega square minus p square plus two b a p cos p t minus theta is equal to. We'll expand it. If into in the form of sine of a plus b, sine p t minus theta in the cos theta plus cos p t minus theta into sine theta. Comparing coefficients. of sin pt minus theta and cos pt minus theta uh, this is a into omega square minus p square is equal to we can write this as f cos theta we'll call this as equation 15 and again comparing the coefficients of cos pt minus theta so we can say this is 2b A P is equal to this. We get f sine theta. We'll call it as equation sixteen. 
Now, in order to get the amplitude and phase of the forced oscillation, so I have just list, uh, left this equation, this equation 15 and equation 16. Now, in, in order to do that, what we'll do? We'll square and add, add equation 15 and 16. So, we get a square omega square minus p square whole square plus 2b a p whole square is equal to this is f square cos square theta plus f square sin square theta. Okay. Now, we will simplify this further. So, this is a square omega square minus p square whole square plus 4 b square a square p square is equal to f square we'll right sin square theta plus cos square theta. Now again I will remove the common term here. So common term is a square. So this becomes omega square minus p square whole square plus 4 b square p square is equal to so, we know that sin square theta plus cos square theta is 1. So, we are left with f square or we can write a square is equal to f square whole divided by omega square minus p square whole square plus 4 b square p square. But we do not want a square, we want the amplitude which is a. So, a is equal to if you take the square root to the right hand side, so we are left with f whole divided by square root of omega square minus p square whole square plus 4b square p square where f is equal to f by m. We call it as equation 17. So, divide equation 16 by 15. So, we get 2b a p is equal to f sin theta divided by a into omega square minus p square divided by f cos theta. So, f gets cancelled. So, sin theta by cos theta, I will just rearrange this. You can write it as tan theta is equal to 2 b a p divided by a into omega square minus p square tan theta is equal to 2 b p divided by omega square minus p square or theta is equal to tan inverse of 2 b p divided by omega square minus p square. We call this as equation 18. So, expression 18 or equation 18 is the phase for the force law oscillation given by theta is equal to tan inverse of 2 bp divided by omega square minus p square where b is the damping coefficient, p is the frequency of the applied force and omega is the frequency with which the body is oscillated.